Hi, welcome to Tim's Garage. Uh, last time we removed the intercooler and I explained the, the process of getting that out. It's a pretty straightforward thing. Today I've got the uh, charge tubes out and I've uh, got the driver's side charge tube right here. Uh, I wanted to show the reason for us moving to the, uh, the higher flow charge tubes. If you look carefully, you can see how squished the pipe is the General Motors did, and that was in order to make it clear where the air cleaner mounts are, which are right here on the Saturn Sky and the Pontiac Solstice. So this, this is where it locates. And in order to ensure that every car with all the manufacturing variances were clear, they squashed those pipes to make it clear over top of the air cleaner assembly, okay? So the, the higher flow tubes that we've got actually are shaped very different. And if you look, you can see how the the one flattened tube is quite s squashed, and the other tube is a nice, wide, free-flowing tube, nice, even bends. That'll help with airflow through the intercooler as it, uh, as it works. Now, in the last episode, um, or pardon me, in episode one, there was a comment, and someone was looking at this and wanted me to mention the GM Performance Parts Tune. Well, in 2006, General Motors introduced a, uh, an upgrade uh, 30 horsepower upgrade for these. That was literally the replacing of a two bar sensor, which is one of these, with the, uh, the three bar sensor, which I have mounted in this tube right here. So this, this sensor only mounts on one side. I've just put a bolt in to finish it off. And make sure when you mount these, you use a little anti-seize compound so the steel of the bolt doesn't uh, cause a reaction with the aluminum and then wind up galling and, and getting seized in there. So I've put a little bit of anti-seize compound on it. Um, with that GM Performance Parts tune, it actually took the car uh, from 260 horsepower to 290 horsepower, and it actually uh, upped the torque to 340 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty good for a uh, drive it in, swap a couple of sensors, and uh, reflash the computer with a tune. Now today, uh, that, that tune is still available. Um, uh, one of the prices I saw was $617 for a couple of sensors, a short little adapter harness. You can see that I've got the other sensor already mounted here. And I've got the little, there's a little short little adapter harness, this little piece right here, the little harness that runs from here all the way to here. And this is the other three bar sensor. D down here in this harness, I've got the, uh, where did I put the sensor? Uh, oh, right here. This is the, the little uh, pigtail that they have pre-made to plug into the charge tube sensor. So they make a, a nice little kit and it's a quick addition. The big advantage of the three bar sensor is that it reads to a higher pressure. Uh, instead of bars, we measure in PSI. So it's gonna be able to read above 25 PSI of boost. So if I decide to go to 28, 29, 30 pounds of boost, I'll have the ability to be able to do that. I'll just have to uh, match the programming in the computer to use that. Um, that. That kit is actually a CARB certified kit and uh, General Motors has the, the California Air Resources Board Executive Order number D12625. And that means that that uh, flashed kit, not only did GM warranty the car after they flashed the kit, um, it was approved in California. Lucky for me, I happen to live in California, so I have the ability to be able to put that on and I'm gonna not run afoul of the law. At least I'm hoping not to. Uh, part of this whole process is to make this car look as inconspicuous as possible. I'd like to be able to make sure I do that. Now, as I've been going through and looking at this, some of the way these tubes are, uh, are, are cut, there's a little bit of an overhang in the tube and a little sharp edge that is on this edge. What I've done is I'm, I'm deburring these tubes, and I don't know if anybody has seen how to deburr, but it's a, it's a pretty easy process, and you simply... Um, you take a little deburring tool like this one, and, it, and it's very easy where you just literally, literally drag it against the surface, and it, and it takes a little tiny bit of the material off so that it gets rid of the sharp edge that's on the inside edge of that tube. And it creates a nice non-burred edge that allows you to 
remove just a little bit of that material from the inside edge of the tube. There we go. So now this, this tube has been nicely deburred. There's no sharp edge left on it. And it's, uh, it's not hanging on the inside of the pipe. See here, when you look, if you look at this pipe right here, this inside edge here actually hangs in or feels like it hangs in a little bit more than the inner surface. And that's probably just me and it's, it's probably fine. But I like the idea of deburring it a little bit on the inside edge just to make sure that it's not hanging inside the, uh, the pipe. So there we go. And now it's deburred. It was that fast to do and just cleans off that inside edge. So that's it for tips on the charge tubes for today. Um, I will come back as I start to install these in the intercooler in a future episode. Thanks for watching.